All right, let's talk a little bit of extra help on project two, which is our financial project. So this, I think, starts in module five. Um, and the big thing is that we're comparing uh, really the monetary value of being a college graduate versus just that of a high school graduate. Um, so once you figure out, you know, what is your goal? What do you want to do? Um, and that can be anything, right? So I'm going to just pretend that whatever I want to do, I'm going to earn $42,750 per year. I'm just making up a bunch of stuff um, to show you kind of how it works within uh, the Excel document. So this is the student template that is available in module five. So when you think about it, really um, B2 and D2 are the only two spots that should not have a formula. Every other space in this spot or on this worksheet should have a formula in Excel. So for the college graduate, we are going to do 42,750. Well, there we go. Okay. So that's the amount that I earn as a college graduate. Um, for a high school graduate, again, I'm going to make up, I'm just going to say 15,000. I wanted to use numbers that are not going to be in your in your project, so you have to think a little bit on your own. So those two values, right? The high school graduate is given in the form or in the worksheet. The college graduate, you have to find that based on what you want to do. Now, for the absolute and the relative change, think about what those are, right? So the absolute change is the final minus the initial which is great if we're talking about year to year because the final year is generally the most recent. But in this case, we have to figure out where are we going from to two, right? So generally we say from a high school graduate to a college graduate. That means the college graduate is the final. So we're going to say equals college graduate minus the high school graduate. And this tells us the difference. Now, the important thing is that this absolute change tells us how much more the college graduate earns. Because when you do your write-up, you're not just saying, well, the absolute change is. That doesn't tell me anything. We want to say the college graduate earns $27,750 more per year than the high school graduate. What does that number mean? That's what you're putting in. And the relative change is the final minus initial divided by the initial. So in this case, formula starts with an equal. We take our absolute change and we will divide by the high school graduate. So as a college graduate, you're earning 185% more than this high school graduate. Okay, that's the idea. Now, I'm not gonna do any more absolute and relative change. We've talked about it once, it's all we're doing. Let's talk about the rest of columns, uh, or yeah, columns B through D, right? Monthly salary. Now in this case, um, it, there's 12 months in a year, right? So if I earn $42,750 a year, if I divide that by 12, I get my monthly salary. So anytime we're doing a, a math calculation, right? Excel is just a big calculator. I can type in equals. I want my college graduate and I'm going to divide by 12. And that will give me my monthly salary which is what I want. And again, we want to use everything with, with formulas because what if you're like, oh crap, that was really supposed to be 43,000. Well, if you change that, everything changes because you're using cell references. Okay, that's why it's important to use those formulas. And you do the same thing for high school graduate. Okay, now percent of salary to mortgage. Generally, people are like, well, I, you know, I, I really want to spend 20% of my monthly salary on my rent or 40% or whatever. Banks have a certain percentage that they want to keep you around when they're thinking about loaning you money. Um, I don't know what it is off the top of my head because I don't work in that business, but I know there is a number, which is why if you only make $15,000 a year and you're trying to buy an $800,000 house, they're going to be like, that debt to income ratio way too big, right? That's the idea. So here you can see over in column I, I wanna use 22% of my monthly income for my house. So percent of salary, percent of, well, I want, tw that's the wrong button. Sorry about that. I gotta be in column B here. Per start with an equal sign. Okay, my percent is 22%. Of means to multiply. So we're going to multiply by my monthly salary. So if my monthly salary is $35.62.50, I'm going to multiply 22% of that. That's how much I am willing to spend on a house payment. 
This is the idea. And here's one other thing I want to throw out. Just because a bank will loan you enough for you to spend 40% or whatever it is, that doesn't mean you should do it. Okay, when I bought my last house, the bank was like, we can, because I asked for like a certain amount um, to be pre-qualified for or whatever. And they're like, we can, we can loan you more. And I'm like, I, I don't want more. Just because I can afford more doesn't mean I want more. I still want a vacation. I still want to pay for a new car, right? I have other things I want to spend money on. But anyway, okay, so now if we know I'm going to spend this much, right? This is basically our house payment, right? So this value I'm just going to put over here is the payment. So when you look at count, uh, uh, row six here, it's saying the total mortgage. How much of a house can you afford? You are going to use the PV function in Excel present value, the present value of the house based off this payment. Now to find the present value of the house, and this is all uh, in our workbook, um, but to talk through it, it's okay, well, what is the interest rate? Um, and I'm using in column I, the interest rate of 9%, which is very high. Um, this is also something that is given in your document. But if I do a 9%, that's annual, we make these payments monthly. So we take our annual, our annual percentage rate, or APR, we divide it by 12. Then in the middle, oh, I didn't put this in column I, but how many payments are you making? Well, we make 12 payments a year. And let's say for this case, uh, we're gonna do a 30 year mortgage. So 12 times 30. You could also just put 360, mathematically equivalent there. And then at the end, it is your, uh, your salary, right? You'll notice I put a minus sign in the front of that, and that's because you're paying this money, right? So it's like a negative, it's going out of your bank account. Okay, so I end the parentheses, and I hit enter. I can afford, on this information, a $97,000 house, okay? And that's primarily because the interest rate is 9%. Um, if you go back into this and you change that 9% to say four, Look how it jumps up a lot, right? So that's just, you can play with that and just look at what do different interest rates do? Or how does it change if you go to a 15 year mortgage, right? All of that fun stuff. Okay, so now let's go to retirement. Um, same idea here. We're gonna put 1.5% of our monthly income into retirement. So I'm gonna do equals. 1.5% is 0 0.015, and then I'm gonna multiply again by my monthly salary. So again, I use the cell rent reference, hit equal. So I'm gonna put $53.44 a month into retirement. And because I wanna look at the future value of my retirement account, okay? So I'm gonna equals FV, future value. And then it's a lot of the same idea that we're, we did with the mortgage. So you'll see over in column I, I have rate of return 22%. It's never going to be that high, but we're playing for fun here. Again, we divide by 12 because this is a monthly thing. How long are we doing this? Well, over here it says we're saving for 19 years. So 12 months in a year for 19 years. Ooh. And then at the end, we are doing Again, a minus sign because I'm putting this money into the retirement and we hit enter. Um, so after 19 years, I'll have you know a little over 180,000. So you will, that's kind of how you go through these. It works the same for the high school graduate and then you'll do the absolute and relative change pieces. Now, the one thing that I do wanna say about absolute and relative change, because you're always going to do column B minus column D, you can just put your, put, go into that cell, hover, so you see that black plus sign there in F2, click and drag, and it will auto fill. Okay, now you can see here it says, uh, you know, hashtag value, that's because I have a the word payment here. If I just get rid of that and hit enter, then it changes. You can do the same thing over here, get the black plus sign, click and drag. Okay, now these things are like, uh, this doesn't work, and that's because we don't have anything here. If I just put values in here, whatever values I want, it changes. So you can see as soon as I put numbers in, it changes because it auto fills. All right, um, so that's kind of the basics of how we work with the Excel. Once you have this document done, then you can go in and uh, write up your questions and work from there. So I hope you found that helpful. Um, let me know if you have questions. Thanks.